I mean, to those of us that are somewhat awake, it's ridiculous. And I say that because they call me the dark heart. Everything with them is inverted. Because my heart is light. They will not extinguish the light. Lucifer is the false light. God made us with the real light. Builders. And we're going to go forth in the universe, and we are going to, not just in the third dimension, but above and below, we are going to green a trillion galaxies. We will create life in unmeasurable amounts and free will as God's consciousness experiencing it at the third dimension until we're even allowed to go to the next level. And I want to be the next level. I want to be fully absorbed in the consciousness of God. And that's the bigger plan. You can be part of it if you want. You're not going to find it in New Age culture, fake churches, anywhere. You're going to find it on your knees to God. And you're going to find it standing up against evil and peer pressure and speaking out against all this globalist poison, the 5G, the GMO, the brainwashing of kids. Anything they push, you know it's evil. Punching the buttons of you because you're a good person. All right, folks, I'm out of here. I love you. I appreciate you. And this is a spiritual decision. That's why it's affecting so many people. It's why evil people are flipping out more. Good people are becoming more awake, having more courage, having incredible understandings, and amazing things are happening. And life extension and secrets of the universe, just the beginnings are starting to happen that's been suppressed while these globalists rob our ideas and our research that God gave us and then hold it and sequester it to themselves and uh, have delusions that they're going to be gods if they could just figure out how all this works when they could... Look in their baby's eyes and see God's plan. You don't live forever off of baby blood and genetic engineering and all this. Sure, it's fine to have your life extended, but you live on to those children and their children. That's the time war in the third dimension. My most ancient ancestors time traveled to the year 2018, June 2nd. That most ancient ancestor loved and took care of, and, and their body grew the baby with all their genetics and handed the next person and the next group and the love and the passion and the spiritual bonding into the next level and the next level, on and on and on, like electricity, an unbroken chain to me right now. I am a time traveler. I am ancient. Our species transcends this planet, this dimension. Our ancient <coughs> genetic code is the future. We have been put in the universe in open soil, ready to ascend. And a cancer stands in our way because the universe is full of free will. And despite the fact that God loves us like himself, he will even put himself or his son in the way to show leaders that true leadership is being willing to be destroyed to teach others. I don't fear my destruction. I fear the destruction of our species and other species. And I fear that the great plan be snuffed out and the evil win. That's the bigger plan. I can't say join us or die because I'm not going to kill you. But they sure hope to. They're saying join them or die. But the moment you join them, you become a robot. Your spiritual connection is cut off. Creep towards that black hole that goes to a place of their own choosing. That's it for this live transmission. Thank you all. Some of my colleagues at Trump Tower a few minutes ago, there's a little optimism here. No one thought it was going to be this close at this point. Uh, Trump can still win this state over another state to project it as the state of North Carolina. Big battleground state. It's going to Donald Trump. I was actually ready to go to bed. Folks, this is not by any means over. I think there's some real jitter setting in and Clinton headquarters right now. Well, the scene here is...
is so different than it was a few hours ago when people were happy and relaxed. This is most unexpected. It certainly is a huge, huge surprise to so many people out there. I think we all thought it couldn't happen, that he couldn't do what he did, and guess what? He may just do it. Donald Trump has taken the lead. He has 216 electoral votes. This is really the beginning of the end for Hillary Clinton's campaign. The going ahead of Hillary Clinton, you see it right there, too. The number of groups who are likely feeling real fear right now. You've got women, immigrants who have been threatened by Donald Trump with deportation. How do I explain this to my children? I have Muslim friends who are texting me tonight saying, should I leave the country? America is crying tonight. I'm not sure how much of America, but a very, very significant portion. And I mean literally crying. People have talked about a miracle. I'm hearing about a nightmare. This is your life now. This is us. This is our country. And guess what? Liberals are freaking out. In a perverted way, these are very creative trolls. These pardons. Dinesh D'Souza, I think he's best described as a sort of conservative provocateur convicted of federal campaign finance fraud. Look, there are lots of miscarriages of justice in this country. It seems hard to believe that so many of them would involve members of his political base. What's his game here? Who's he, who's he sending this message to? You would think that liberals would be happy that the president pardoned another brown immigrant man that was harshly and overly prosecuted for his non-violent crime. But no, they are selectively outraged that the president pardoned Dinesh D'Souza because Dinesh D'Souza is a conservative. Many know Dinesh D'Souza as a documentarian, an author, a father and a husband, and somebody who is an outspoken conservative political commentator. Dinesh D'Souza's attorney said that he was selectively targeted for felony prosecution because of his outspoken, vigorous, and politically controversial criticism and condemnation of President Obama and his administration. His case was essentially a wobbler that was enhanced into felony prosecution. Most people who commit the same non-violent crime don't experience such harsh penalties as Dinesh D'Souza did. For example, where was the outrage when Rosie O'Donnell, who committed several of the same campaign violations that Dinesh D'Souza did, wasn't charged? When Rosie O'Donnell was caught committing her campaign violations, she said, Oh, I just didn't know. I figured that when I sent too much money, that they would just send the extra amount back to me. Really? That's why you use several different New York addresses and several different variations of the spelling of your name. You had no idea, and you figured that they would just send the money back to you that they couldn't keep. And you know what? That's exactly what they did end up doing. Imagine a bank robber getting the charges let off for returning the money. And did I mention she committed the same violation several times? Where was the outrage when President Obama pardoned terrorist Oscar Lopez Rivera? Oh wait, he was a communist. Notice that Wikipedia has to display that Dinesh D'Souza is a convicted felon. And by the way, all Trump's pardon of Dinesh D'Souza is doing is essentially taking away Dinesh D'Souza's probation. So I wonder if Wikipedia is going to redact their Wikipedia page on Dinesh D'Souza to now remove the part that says that he's a convicted felon. I'm not going to hold my breath. Dinesh D'Souza is the brown guy all brown people don't want to be associated with. Hashtag Dinesh D'Souza. The heck is this? 
Everyone you pardon will be treated as the viper they are. Everyone